Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be kicking off a new short mini series here on the channel talking about typography. And this is gonna cover some of the basics around typography, some of the terminology around typography, and how you can use this in your designs moving forward. And whether you're a graphic designer or a web designer, UI designer, UX designer, product designer, whatever you wanna call yourself, whatever your title currently is, it's always important to have a good foundational understanding of typography and how to use it in your designs. So I'm gonna start off this first video looking at kerning and we're gonna also take a look at tracking. And then some of the other videos we're gonna get more into letting and font choices and serif versus sans serif, all that good stuff. So let's get into it here today and let's get started. All right, so we're here in Figma. Figma, again, my old friend. Open this up probably a thousand times a day, but we're here once again. Uh, sorry for, again, all the bright light on my face. Figma, please, 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 please for Christmas, can I have dark mode this year? It's all I want. I know there's a lot of cool stuff coming to Figma. I really want dark mode. Uh, anyway, we'll get through this together. So we're here in Figma. These are the terms we're gonna look at today. And I chose Figma specifically because a lot of what I cover on this channel is very UX, UI design focused, and a lot of uh, you know building mockups and wireframes and things like that for mobile applications or websites. And if you're gonna be doing print stuff, uh, more of like multi-column print layout or multi-page print layout, of course, a program like InDesign or maybe um, I know Affinity Publisher, I believe it's called, has a really great program as well. But as designers, UX designers, uh, product designers, we need to uh, know how to do typography as well. We need to understand how to lay out a document, how to make it flow, how to bring the user's attention to a given area. Like here, you want the user's eye to really go to the title and read that first. So I'm doing it in Figma today just to show you where all the controls are. Uh, but again, if you're doing a print design document, you may want to use another program. Typography is another one of those amazing tools in our tool set that can just kind of bring out at the right time to blow people away because they just don't understand what they're looking at, but they know that they feel good about the design. They know when they look at this document, it just feels like it's well put together, easy to read, easy to understand. And typography is not really an exact science. It's not something where there's a document that says kerning or letting or some of these other terms we're gonna go over today must be this certain amount. It's a very organic thing and it changes from font choice to font choice. So if you choose a typeface of Arial, but if you choose Roboto, you're gonna have a completely, you can see how it kind of gets a little bigger, gets a little wider. This font has a little bit of extra spacing in between uh, letters, which is called kerning, which is the first thing we're gonna go over. But then if you look at something like times, you can see how the paragraph gets a lot shorter, looks completely different. So it just really depends from font to font, also the size. So if you are changing your size here as well, you're gonna see things flow differently. Uh, stuff starts to get a little more squished here as to where when we're smaller, it looks a little more easy to read and a little more legible. So it really is this kind of just visual aesthetic that you have to make a choice on every time you start a new design. All right, so let's get into some of these specific terms. So the first one, and let's make our letters here a little bigger so it's easier to see this effect here. Kerning is the space between individual letters. So E and R, it's the space in between here. R and N, it's the space in between here. So we can see if we drag a little box just to do some measuring, I do this a lot in my designs. It's not quite exact because it's not down to like half pixel, uh, but you can see here if you Look at this space, that the kerning is a lot tighter here between the R and the N. If you come over here, now you see that the kerning is actually wider between the N and the I than it is the E and the R. So it's the space and the choice that you make uh, for that space that goes between two given letters in a word or sentence or a paragraph. Kerning can have monumental effects in your design, and you may not think about that, like really adjusting the space between two letters can make the difference between a good design or a bad design. Well, to pull over, uh, just search for some bad kerning examples. If you ever want uh, a few laughs, you can definitely look at this on some Reddit threads and kind of enjoy some of the weirdness that happens when you have bad kerning. Here's a good example, massage therapist, uh, that kerning between, and these are real life examples. This is stuff that is out there in the world. It just goes to show that it really matters when you have a good designer that is overseeing a lot of this before it goes out into the wild. So you can see this is supposed to be a massage therapist. It doesn't really say that. And you know, this can cause a lot of problems when you have this uh, out in the wild. Final touch here, kerning on the 
Uh, F in the eye, that's a huge difference. That's a big difference when that F gets into the eye. Should have probably changed the kerning on that. Uh, so you can see, you know, spend some time just going through here and looking at some of these examples. Megaflix, terrible name to start with for AA business, but um, yeah, probably should have worked on their kerning there too. So point being, kerning can matter. And we need to pay attention to it in our designs, in our logos, in our text to make sure that we are doing good kerning between letters for not only readability for our users, but also to avoid any of those bad design mishaps. All right, so let's take a real quick look at kerning here inside of Figma. Now, kerning is a little bit different inside of Figma than it is in other programs. And the reason I say this is because we select a chunk of text here in our body paragraph. Uh, we can come over here to something called letter spacing. Now, letter spacing is actually also AKA tracking. And tracking is the spacing between all of the letters and all the words in a given paragraph. So we can see here, if we adjust the tracking or the letter spacing inside of Figma, it's see how the paragraph gets bigger and smaller. It's because it's adjusting the individual kerning and the space between words in the entire paragraph to either make it longer or thinner or more breathable or harder to read, depending on your design aesthetic. And if you open up something like Illustrator, pop this open just real quick for an example. In these more uh, detailed programs that have to do with print design and layout design, they give you the option for individual adjustments. So here you can see set the kerning between two characters and here it's set the tracking for all of the selected characters. So that's more what this is, is setting the kerning or the tracking to be divided up equally between all of the letters and all the words in your paragraph. So there is no individual kerning adjustment here, I'm not at least that I'm aware of, I'm hoping that's something to add in the future so this becomes a more well-rounded program that you can use for print and layout design for things like applications and websites. But for today, uh, we have letter spacing. And what you can do though, is if you're just say working on a logo. So say we wanna turn this kerning thing into a logo. Little pro tip here, shift command O, we'll turn this into shapes. And what this allows you to do then is you're able to adjust the individual kerning of letters. So say I wanna move my K over, maybe I wanna move my E over and just really tighten this up. That's looking a little better. Maybe I wanna move my N over, cause that's not quite, quite right. So maybe about right there and then move my G over. So this really allows you to get individual spacing and kerning here inside of Figma by outlining this. Now, the downside of outlining something is it's now a shape. So you can see over in your panel over here, it's showing as a shape, not text. So that means this is no longer edible. So if you wanted to change this E to an A and spell kerning instead of kerning, we couldn't do that. We'd have to retype this out or delete this E and insert another E in there. We could also do that. So there, there's advantages and disadvantages of Figma. One of the disadvantages is it's not really made for print design. Now, the bigger example of this probably is just using the letter spacing, which allows you to really make your paragraphs flow a little better and make them a little more readable. So if you're laying out something like support documentation or something that's really content heavy, like a Q&A page, you really wanna make sure that you have breathable text in here so it's easier for users to parse the document, read it, and get the content that they need without struggling or trying to squint to see what's what. And that's it for kerning and tracking. Hopefully you now have a little better understanding of kerning, what it is, why you need to pay attention to it so we don't make some of those design mistakes and also tracking and how the two work together. And the next time you kind of got a preview of it in this video, but we're gonna take a look at letting on the next video as well as widows and orphans. So hopefully you got some value out of this. If you did, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell if you wanna be notified of that next topography video as well as all the other videos I put out here on the channel around design, UI, UX, and art related topics. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time and we'll see you on the next video.